Hey everybody, it's Dan Chaney and it's time for another Music Charts Archive show here on DJ and TV. This week we're going to be talking about Record Chart Underachievers, 1981 edition. That means we'll go through 10 songs from 1981 that didn't make the top 40, but I think should have. I did another show like this a little over a month ago about songs from 1980 and I liked putting that show together so much that I moved on to the next year, 1981. We'll go through the list of songs in the order that they actually did chart from lowest to highest. And I think there's a nice mix of rock, pop, R&B, new wave, and there's even a novelty song thrown in there. Um, so stay where you are, and we'll check out my list of 10 underachieving songs from 1981 on this week's edition of the Music Charts Archive Show. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Music Charts Archive show. Today we're going through a list of songs from 1981 that didn't make the top 40, but should have. So let's start that chart. At number 10, we have Sweet Marilee by Donny Iris. Donny Iris was a rock musician with the band The Jaggers, and later he joined Wild Cherry, but he joined Wild Cherry after their hit song played that funky music. Iris charted seven songs in the 80s as a solo artist, three of which made the top 40. His first and probably his most famous song was Ah Leah. Sweet Merrily was the first single from his 1981 album called King Cool, and the song peaked at number 80 in November of 1981. Iris co-wrote the song with producer Mark Avsek, who also spent time with the band Wild Cherry. <laughs> Number nine on the list is Controversy by Prince. At this point, Prince hadn't really gone mainstream quite yet. That would happen around 1983. Controversy was the title track from his fourth studio album, and it peaked at number 70 in November of 81. It did hit number three on the R&B chart. The lyrics about how he doesn't understand all the questions people have about him regarding race and religion and sexuality, etc. In the middle of the track, he actually recites the Lord's Prayer in full, which caused some people to consider the song blasphemous and add to the song's controversy. <laughs> Number eight on my list is Talking Out of Turn by the Moody Blues. The Moody Blues had a big comeback album in 1981 called Long Distance Voyager. The album hit number one and spawned two top 40 hits, Gemini Dream and The Voice. The album also contained this track, which peaked at number 65 late in 1981. The song was written and sung by bass player John Lodge. It runs about seven and a half minutes long, and it's just a little bit shorter than the band's classic song, Nights in White Satin. The instrumental final minute of the song closes the first hour of the Mike Malloy show, a syndicated progressive talk radio show. At number seven, we have We Can Get Together by the band Ice House. The Australian band Ice House would eventually hit the U.S. top 40 later in the 80s with songs like Crazy and Electric Blue. The band has gone through many lineup changes with the one constant being founder and front man Iva Davies. We Can Get Together was their very first chart single in the U.S. and it peaked at number 62 in August of 81. The band was initially called Flowers, but they had to change their name after being signed to Chrysalis Records because there was a Scottish band already called The Flowers. At number six, Shut Up You Face by Joe Dolce. This novelty song was actually a huge international hit, reaching number one in over 10 countries. It was especially big in Australia where it hit number one for eight weeks and was the longest it was the longest and most successful um, Australian produced uh, single. It was that country's first triple platinum recording. US audiences weren't quite so receptive as the song only picked at number 53 over here. The song is basically about a rebellious Italian boy who is constantly scolded by his mother to shut up you face.
Welcome back to this week's Music Charts Archive show. Today we're going through 10 songs from 1981 that didn't make the top 40, but should have. And it's time for the top five. <laughs> Number five on my list is Tempted by Squeeze. The British band Squeeze had gone through, uh, has gone through different incarnations, but these, they've always included the team of Chris Difford and Glenn Tilbrook. They, all, they had already had several hit singles in their native UK before Tempted became their first chart single in the US. And singing lead on the track was then keyboard player Paul Carrick, who has also sung lead on How Long, the 70s song by the band Ace, and he sung lead on several Mike and, Mechanics, Mike and the Mechanics tracks like The Living Ears. Tempted was not a big hit initially in any country, really. It hit number 49 in the US. But it's since become more ingrained in pop culture through its use in commercials, movie soundtracks, and video games. <sighs> Number four on the list, Super Trooper by ABBA. This was the 18th chart single in the US for Swedish supergroup ABBA and the third single from their Super Trooper album. The song is about a singer performing on stage in the spotlight and they are given encouragement knowing that somewhere out there in that crowd is that special person. A super trooper is actually a brand of spotlight used in large venues. This was the last song written for the album, which had already been called Super Trooper, and it was kind of a fortunate coincidence that the album title fit the theme of this song. The song is also included in the musical Mamma Mia and has hit number one in several European countries. <laughs> At number three, we have Tom Sawyer by Rush. This was the second single from Rush's Moving Pictures album, and it peaked at number 44 in August of 1981. Many uh, might consider this as Rush's signature song, and even singer Getty Lee has called the track a defining piece of music for the band. It was written in, by the band in collaboration with lyricist and poet Pai Dubois. Drummer Neil Peart said that uh, saw a Dubois poem called Louis the Lawyer, which he proceeded to adapt and expand on. Neil Peart said that the original poem is about a modern day rebel, and he added the themes of reconciling the boy and man within himself. <laughs> Coming in at number two on my list, Working in the Coal Mine by Devo. A lot of people have heard of the band Devo, mostly because of their hit single, Whip It. Other than that though, they've not had much mainstream success. They charted two other singles in the US, the theme from the 80s movie Dr. Detroit was one, and then this song, which peaked at number 43. Working in the Coal Mine was included in the soundtrack of the movie Heavy Metal, and it's actually a remake. The original version was uh, by Lee Dorsey, and it hit number eight in 1966. Devo's version was also used as the theme song to the short-lived NBC sitcom called Working, starring Fred Savage. But now at number one, we have Flash's theme by Queen. In late 1980, a campy movie about the comic book character Flash Gordon was released with the entire musical soundtrack and score composed by the band Queen. The movie was not a commercial success in the US, but has since gained a cult following. There are two versions of the theme song, one that plays at the beginning of the movie, while the version that was released as a single contains dialogue from various parts within the movie. Queen guitarist Brian May wrote the song and plays all the instruments except the rhythm section. He also provides some of the vocals along with Freddie Mercury. The song reached number 42 in February of 1981. So I've got a couple honorable mentions to uh, mention. Uh, Cliff Richard and give a little bit more. Lover Boy and The Kid Is Hot Tonight. The Who, Don't Let Go The Coat. Lakeside's Fantastic Voyage and Limelight, again by Rush. Well, there you have it. Those are 10 songs that I feel should have made the top 40, but did not from 1981. Which are your favorites? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to go with Flash's theme and We Can Get Together by Ice House and also I think Talking Out of Turn by the Moody Blues. This has been Dan Cheney for the Music Charts Archive Show and be sure to join me again next time for another show right here on DJN TV.